Octopath Traveler has one of the most fresh soundtracks in JRPGs that got released in the past few years. Today I want to talk about my favorite tracks in this game from the perspective of a professional music producer. The first thing that made me fall in love with this soundtrack by Yasunori Nishiki is the way he uses melodies. For example, you hear that in the main theme, the first track we hear in the game. You have these beautiful woodwinds that feel like freedom and like these strings that accompany the pacing of this melody. And then it kind of evolves like this. Same melody, just a um, semitone higher, but it's the same melody. Why is it so cool though? What? God. Why am I getting goosebumps now and I wasn't getting goosebumps before? Well, the reason is the magic trick that is being used. There's two steps to pull off a powerful magic trick. One, distract people with something so obvious and simple. In this case, the melody. And while they're getting focused on that, on do step two, do something very complex, which is where the magic happens. In this case, it's the chord and the orchestration. To give you some context, this is what happens in the music when we remove the melody. What you're hearing right now, these are called chords or a chord progression. A chord is when you play multiple notes together and they form this beautiful harmonic sound. The chords in a song define the road in which the melody travels. So in a way, it feels like the melody represents the eight characters that are taking us on an adventure with them. While these chords and the orchestration represents the land that is being explored. And that's why it keeps on improving and changing and stuff because the characters keep on moving to different lands and territories and different adventures. And we feel different emotions as we go through the journey with them. This is what the game is about. And this is also what the main theme is about. It fits perfectly and it's amazing. Especially, this is noticeable when the melody repeats. Like there's this part here. Which repeats after two and does something like this. Why do you think that hits different? Well, because on one side you have this chord, which feels like rest and relax, but this one, which plays on the repetition, is way more tense. That's how Yasunori Nishiki gently nudges us into feeling all the emotions he wants us to feel. This, again, might not sound like, oh, this is so cool, you know, because what people hear is the melody. People pay attention to the thing that's getting them distracted from the magic trick happening behind. The prestige, if you saw the film. That's exactly what's happening. For example, if we take this song that we all know. You may think, oh yeah, this is sad because I remember the melody, it's Roxas and blah, blah. The reason why I feel sad is this. This is way more sad than the melody itself. That's like 80% of the sadness in Roxas' theme. The melody is what you remember, but the way they make you feel stuff is what's hidden underneath. The second thing I love a lot about Octopath Traveler music is the boss theme called Decisive Battle 2. For every single of the eight characters, this theme feels like it's a different boss music because of the way Yasunori Nishiki composed it. Essentially, he made the masterful move to compose a different intro for every single eight characters. And this intro, which is based on the character theme, will then fade into the boss theme in a different way all the freaking time. For example, this is what he did with Olberic. There's this like epic version of Olberic's theme that keeps on looping for as long as you keep on talking with the boss before the cutscene ends. What I love a lot about this theme is the freaking drums at the beginning. I mean, check that fucking shit out. I mean, are you, are you fucking kidding me? Like, are you guys expecting something like that out of like medieval JRPG sort of soundtrack? This sounds like rock and metal as heck. Like I, I just I just took the freedom to rewrite these drums because they're just so fucking good. The feel right here. I mean, that's freaking crazy. Unexpected, sound freaking epic, and they match the orchestra perfectly. It's not easy at all to actually write orchestral music with rock components, but Octopath Traveler does that a lot. And it does that in style. I would say this boss theme kind of slaps in general, though. I like there's this part right here with this beautiful brass and screens, like this chef kiss. No? It's so amazing. And then this transition here. That's like That's like. I mean, it's essentially like a A minor chord that goes to D major. 
But I don't know. It kind of has the same energy as freaking, you know, Rowan theme from Lord of the Rings. Remember that? I don't know. I feel that. And that bass line that plays like when the rest is silent. Like, da, da, boo, boo, boo. <laughs> it's like everything that I love is in here. It's probably my favorite track in the game. Talking about the things that I like being in here. Have you guys checked out the bass in this music? I'm like... That sounds sort of like something that Nobuo Uematsu would do in Final Fantasy VI, like... It's so cool, especially in this battle thing. I mean, this baseline is freaking amazing, and if you speed it up, you get this. just made to sound funky. There's a few reasons for this, but one which is hugely responsible is the fact that this is a chromatic ascending bass line, like this. That's very freaking funk, but also freaking opera, because this is something we heard in one of the most loved opera song in gaming called God Shattering Star. This right here is the normal battle theme, just so you know, like the normal battle theme sounds like punk opera, symphonic orchestra, what, what the hell, like, I, I don't have words, and also I love the part that comes after. Like, that's so amazing, like, that, that's so powerful. That's so freaking powerful. There's no words to describe this. I know I must look like a dork right now, nerding over classical punk opera music in a video game. But man, this is like, again, how many things can Yasunori Nishiki do? This is the same guy who, by the way, wrote One Wing Danger Rebirth, just so you know. So the capabilities of this person are kind of, I don't know, kind of crazy. Like, there's no other word to describe this. So we have incredible melody, some drum feels that make you freaking hyped, a boss theme that kind of changes depending on the situation, like some freaking crazy funk opera crossover. <laughs> classical and then on top of all that energy there's feels the feels i felt when i was walking through the streets of flames grace and this kicked in my god I still <laughs> this still gives me freaking goosebumps man like i remember the first time I heard this one, I just put the controller down and I just stayed there just to listen to it over and over with the beautiful scenery of Flames Grace. It's very interesting because like Flames Grace is a, is a city in the utmost cold lands of the world where we are right now in the Octopath Traveler. But this soundtrack feels so warm and soothing, even though we're surrounded by cold, essentially. There's a few reasons for that, obviously. And as you've learned in the first part of this video, what is responsible for this thing usually is the chord progression. I've wrote a solo piano arrangement to show you what it sounds like. So it's... Oh my god. I can't. It's so beautiful, guys. Holy shit, dude. I'm, 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 I, I can't, like, maybe it's because I'm a composer, fine. Maybe I'm just a composer, I'm a nerd, and I get emotional about stuff, like, I don't know, F-sharp minor becoming an F-sharp major through a journey at the end here. I, I don't know, but l let me, let me try to make you understand what I'm feeling here. So, for example, this chord here. so cool like what it did was use like c major and f major but instead of doing something like this which is c major he adds a d and he does the same thing later with an f major but instead of making it the normal f major he adds two notes that make this so much more emotional to give you an example of how powerful this chord is
Going back to Flames Grace, my favorite part here is the bit where it gets all freaking tragic and sad. And then he finds the light again. It might not sound like much, but if you consider the track started with this chord, very sunny ninth chord, and then it goes here. Which is very dramatic and tragic. I think it's kind of like Nishiki trying to represent it in this city, which feels very warm and familiar. There's still so much pain. That's kind of how I feel. This could be narrating the story of like Ophelia and father and a sister and stuff like that. It's nice that it ends on a note of hope, you know, because it goes from F sharp minor to F sharp major. It's kind of darkness and light, but the thing I love a lot is how it goes from F sharp minor to F sharp major. It's so beautiful, like it takes us on the whole journey of using a sustained chord. Like that sort of sound is very used in anime music. You hear it a lot in Japanese music, like these suspended chords that then resolve into major. It's very cool. There is an entire journey in just 10 seconds of chord progression. It's very comforting as it represents the intricacies of being a human, in my opinion. And uh, it sounds amazing when you turn it into a lo-fi hip-hop remix. There's another huge point why this soundtrack is freaking mind-blowing and it's called Daughter of the Dark God. I think I will be making a separate video for that one because it's a freaking huge track. By the way, special thanks to the people who requested this over at Patreon, which is where you can ask me to review any track from any video game you like. You guys are the reason why I'm able to make videos as detailed as this one. It costs a lot of time to make them, but thanks to your support, it's possible. So thanks for that. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.